What I'm holding in my hand now is a bass string. Now eventually you're going to have to learn how to change one of these. There are a couple of good reasons. One is you might break a bass string. You'll have to know how to put a new one on. Secondly, over time, strings, they become dirty, they become oily, and they just don't sound as good and they don't hold tuning as well. So eventually you're going to have to change a string. So we're going to teach you that right now. The first thing you have to do is take off the old string. Either it's broken or it's old, you have to take it off. So you're going to just unwind the tuning gear so the string becomes really, really loose and the windings become loose so that you can just pull the string off. And then because this, these windings, they have to fit through a hole at the bottom of the bridge, you kind of have to straighten it out, straighten out the windings. When that, once that's just straight, just pull the string on out of the bridge and get rid of it. Let somebody else worry about that. And then you unravel the new string. Now as you can see this string is pretty long. String makers make strings excessively long because basses have different scales or different lengths. So they want to make sure you have more than enough length of string to accommodate the bass that you're putting the new string on. So what do we do about that? Well, first of all, we, we don't want to cut the string until we know how long the string has to be because we have to actually wind it around the tuning peg. So what we're going to do right now is take the string, go down to the hole at the bottom of the bridge, pull the string up over the saddle. That's the part of the bridge that holds the string up. And there's a groove there, so I'm sliding the string along the groove. Let me show you that. Here's the saddle. What I should have told you is that it'd be nice for you to have your handy wire cutters around to help cut the length of the string to where we need it. What we'll do now is we'll wind the string around the tuning gear. We'll wind it around twice. Now we've got that nice and tight, two windings. And as you're winding it around, keep the last part of the string that goes around the tuning gear at the bottom of the windings, closest to the headstock. Take the wire cutters, about maybe an inch and a half away from the tuning gear, we'll cut the string. Throw it on the floor, let the maid take care of it. Now we'll take the string and now we're going to unwind it a little bit. The purpose of that, doing that is because we're going to have to actually place the tip of the string into a hole that's inside the tuning gear. I'm going to show you that. The purpose of that hole is to lock the string into the tuning gear. Then we'll bend the string once it's in the hole. It'll be something like this. That'll lock the string down in the tuning gear. And this part, the bent part, will go in the slot there. And then we'll start to wind the tuning peg around the tuning gear. So I'm putting it in the hole now, bending the string around the tuning gear. Now there's a question sometimes about which direction do you, do you wind it around. If you'll notice on this instrument, the E and the A string have the windings going in such a way that they're on the right of the tuning gear. The string itself is on the right of the tuning gear. Let me show you that. The E and the A. You hold that. The string is on the right of the tuning gear. And then on the D and the G, the string is to the left. That's because as you tighten this string, the tuning gear is going to move counterclockwise and get tighter and tighter. And we're 
tightening up. I'm holding the string down on the nut as I'm tightening it. Pretty soon the string gets tight enough so you don't have to hold it anymore. At that point, your string is tight enough to actually go to your tuner and tune the string. Now, at that point, the string is brand new and fresh. It sounds great, but what might happen as you start playing, you notice that the string will start to sound out of tune, even after you tune up. The reason is because the string hasn't been stretched. The strings, after you've been playing them for a while, the tuning starts to settle in, but a brand new string it's going to be out of tune for a little while. So one thing that you can do to help it settle in is to stretch the string. Lots of ways of doing it. One simple way is to just pull on the string. Just pull it from side to side, kind of get the string stretched. You can also push down at either end of the string. Helps the string get stretched. Then check your tuning again. Now you're ready to go. You're ready to make some more music. In this segment, I want to talk to you about taking care of your guitar. This is very important. As you're playing, you're going to collect oil and dirt on the instrument, particularly on the strings. So when you're done playing, it's really important to prolong the life of the strings. Just wipe them down. Just find a soft cloth, wipe the strings down. You can wipe them just along the top. You can also go in individually and wipe each string underneath the string. Now these strings are pretty new and I can already see that there's dirt that's accumulated from playing these strings. So it's real important. Keep your strings clean. Now it's also a good idea once or twice a year to take all the strings off. And what you're going to do is go to a music store and pick up a guitar cleaner and you're going to wipe the neck down. Uh, it usually has lemon oil in it, which is very, very good for maintaining the, the fingerboard. So those are the things you want to do. And also, it makes it, it's a good idea after, after you play also to wipe the back of the neck. Because you'll accumulate a lot of dirt and crud back there too. So that's a little something about uh, keeping your instrument nice and clean. You should also be aware that there are other parts of your bass that are adjustable. First, the pickups. With a Phillips screwdriver, the height of the pick pickups, or how close they are to the strings, can be adjusted. Also, the bridge, the height of the bridge can be adjusted too. We don't normally recommend it because it's something that's a little bit more of a specialized kind of care that's required. So if you feel that something feels a little funny about the height of the pickup, we suggest that you take it into a qualified bass tech or qualified bass repairman. There's one other part of the bass that can be adjusted. It's something that is important for it to be set correctly. Only problem is you can't see it. It sits inside the neck and it's called a truss rod. This black piece here underneath, uh, on top of the headstock is the cover for the truss rod. The truss rod's role is to keep the angle or pitch of the neck exactly right. Now this is not something we recommend everybody going in and adjusting your truss rod. It really should only be done by a qualified person, once again a base tech or a base repair person. Um, but if you feel like something is funny about the base, um, we recommend yeah, going in and having the truss rod looked at and see if it needs adjustment.